Morning, Bill. Can you hear me in there? The mics are good. That's right, we're we're in the octagon. We're in the octagon. I'm, I'm with, with two lovely ladies in here, Hayden Solway on my right and Patty McMurray on my left from Hospice Cleveland County, is that correct? Right. Correct. Okay. Hospice Cleveland County. How, how long have you been with hospice? Twenty five uh, years. Twenty five years. We're gonna talk uh, hospice today, what it is, uh, talk about any misconceptions of what hospice does and, and how just it's just an amazing service and ministry really uh, to the community. Um, and we'll get into that in a second. Milton, how was your week? Okay, Milton's on the Milton's on a call. Milton's on a call. All right, I'd like to invite anyone who has any questions to call in. Uh, call in W O H S. We gave away some uh, gift certificates last week. Do we have any this week to give away? We do. Okay, and those are what twenty dollars gift certificates to Golden Corral. And we did a quiz last week to give those away. Give away a couple. We'll see how the show goes. We'll come up. See how the show goes. I think we need to give away those gift certificates to the first two callers that has a question for Patty McMurray about hospice or a comment about hospice care. We have two $20 each gift certificates to Golden Corral. Take your family out. First two callers that have a question for Patty McMurray about hospice care or a comment about hospice care could be kind. Gets those gift certificates. Do you have those with I you? I have them with me, and we can leave them here we'll at the radio station. We'll leave them at the station radio station for callers to office. pick up. We'll work out something. Let's, let's leave them at the radio station for callers okay. to pick up. Okay. They can pick them up uh, after the show, anytime today. Okay. Yeah. So, so uh, you know, it's been uh, an entire series of shows. Uh, I was just talking to Patty about how this thing started out as kind of me just blasting out in the community what elder law is and how to protect your hard earned money and property. And then we've just gotten into our continu continuum of care series from in-home care with Bayada and Andrew Mitchell to um, life enrichment with Susie Kennedy and adult daycare uh, to, to uh, what's that? Access, Access health care uh, and care, for, yeah, care solutions mm -hmm. as well as Journey had Journey on, sure uh, and just and we've been, buyers, we and buyers and, yes, we did, and it's just we've just been very blessed, and we've really kind of gone along just all, a lot of different options that senior seniors have for care, asset protection with Jamie Richard, um, and, and and now we have have hospice here today. Um, okay. Let's talk a little bit about hospice today. You ready to do that? I can talk a lot about hospice. You can hospice. talk a lot about hospice? Okay, all right. Um, the names that you were mentioning, uh, Nancy and Jamie and um, Susie Kennedy, those people were very instrumental in helping start hospice. Okay. Um, they, I, one thing about our community that we found everywhere we go, in conferences, um, seminars, everything, every place that we go, Cleveland County is very unique because our agencies tend not to compete with each other, but right. to help each other out. It's a, a great place to live, it's a, a great place to raise a family and um, become old. Um, I'll tell you that next Tuesday is our 30th anniversary at hospice. Next Tuesday we took in our first patient 30 years ago. So we're celebrating 30 years in the Shelby Star, the newspaper. We'll have an insert, um, which is a 12 page insert, all about Hospice Cleveland County, how we were formed, uh, where we are today. Uh, as of today, we have taken care of over 10,000 people who have died in Cleveland County. Wow. So that's uh, in 30 years. Uh, we were one of the first hospices in North Carolina. Now you stop me if I'm talking too much. Can you want to ask me questions? No, I can no, talk please. so much about it. Very passionate about it. Um, the way I came to hospice, my two grandmothers died the same year. One grandmother died at the hospital, lots of tubes. Um, you know, every two hours, two family members could go in to see her. Um, when it looked like she wasn't going to live much longer, the nurse came out and um, said two family members can go and be with your mom while she dies. Um, my mother had seven children in the family. She happened to be the second oldest, so she got to be with her mom, and everybody else was in the waiting room waiting. 
Um, shortly after that, my other grandmother got sick. She had colon cancer, and she was dying. That happened to be the first year that Hospice Cleveland County started. She was one of the first patients, and everybody was at the house. She died at home, and I'm um, dad. All of us were there. All the grandchildren were there. A totally two different kinds of death. And that's how Hospice Cleveland County got started, because there were people in our area who had heard about hospices. Uh, it's a pretty new concept. The first hospice in America was in 1974. Okay. So it's very new. And you know, now just about every county and every state in America has a hospice. Mm -hmm. And every country really has, uh, has hospices. Um, but it's a new, it was a new concept at that time. But people just realized that um, it was kind of like birth. You know, we, women used to be put to sleep when they had babies. And they would wake up and they'd have a baby. And then um, natural childbirth started, and, and things just started getting back to nature. And, and the concept of death also got that way. Yeah, so, but I, think, I mean, I think things are coming around full circle. Full circle. Like, like, but just like the birth thing, right. you know, for probably ever. You know, okay. Since human beings were human beings, just, women were having babies. You that's know, right. That's in the right. cave or at home that's or wherever. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And, and then And then, uh, and then you know, with modern medicine, maybe you're right. We, we went. A little overboard with the modern medicine, right. and uh, well, and yeah. that and that hap happened with death and dying also. And death and dying also. Yeah. I mean, and, you, can, you know, you used to die at home, I guess, with your family. That's right. Yeah. And if you ask people, you know, ninety-five percent of the people that you ask, how would you like to die? Everybody says at home. Well, way less than half of people die at home. Right. And and everybody wants to, you know, but there's so many things that, that prohibit that, mm -hmm. and there's so much fear in that, and like you say, modern medicine, you know, sure. you can keep people going for a long, long time. Yeah, and sometimes you're trying to do good, you're trying to, you know, there's things you can go too far sometimes, right? Maybe, right? And, and just the whole the whole care system. So you're trying to achieve maybe some. I look quality. at it as maybe some quality and balance That's there right. in the care system. And, and take that. I like to give back to nature. A little Right, yeah. you know, and, and take that fear away because people are afraid, and um, that's what we do at hospices: journey through people, journey with people through this experience. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've had people before when we called and wanted to set up an admission time, and and you know, people are afraid and they'll say, "Oh gosh, if hospice comes in, mom's gonna die." And the thing about it is, mom is gonna die. Right. And so and we, we, uh, we all are. Right. Yes. And, and we I'm gonna be frozen. <laughs> Really? Yeah, I don't know. Officer Michael? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can back um, But um, Was Michael Jackson for us? Really? Yeah. Or was or Yeah. Oh, okay. well, his, Ted Williams was. Walt Disney was? He's okay. the person I was. Me and Ted and Walt Disney. No, not me. When it's time, I'm, I'm gone. I'm okay. Gone. Um, but that's what we want to do is, is get in and, and help make that experience um, as good as possible. And, and with the scary part about hospice, it's only the first 30 minutes of that first visit. And, and I promise you, you know, and I will tell people, if, if we come in in five minutes, after we explain what we can do, if, if you want us to leave, we will leave in five minutes. It's never happened that we've had to leave. People are always just very complimentary and um, relieved, actually. You know, on our first visit, we put a telephone number, give it to them 24-7, that they can call for a nurse to come and visit. And that's, even just having that number, where they, whether they call or not, um, is, is so much security to them. You don't have to take somebody to the hospital, you don't have to wonder, um, you know, we, we are real involved in pain and symptom control. Um, doctors, you know, I had, had a conversation with a doctor one time, he said, you know, we're really taking care of our patients really well. And so what can you do better? Well, I explain, you know, when people come to the doctor, they're in pain, you know, and you get pain medication and a prescription. But when that person leaves with that prescription, it doesn't mean they have the money to be able to buy that prescription. Right. It doesn't mean that, that, that they are aware that that pain medication is going to cause constipation. And so there are other things that go, go along with this illness and just that one pain prescription that our nurses can really address. And, and have people as comfortable as possible. Each family's having to take care of their loved one, got that number to call 24 hours a day, got grief counselors, chaplains, social workers. Um, our nurse, our, our director of nursing, Lee Ann, she said many times, the, the easy part of hospice work is what the nurse goes out and does. Get the symptoms, get, get the pain, and those kinds of things managed. But then the hard part of the dying process starts. It's those um, those those um, fears and those thoughts and those dark nights and those 
um, emotional and spiritual and mental things that that, um, that, that people are dealing with. Now, I, I left here last week, and in the car was listening to NPR. And there was a lady on that had just written a book. I wish I, I think I jotted down the name of the book. I need to go read it. Um, but it was about her experiences as a hospice care provider and nurse and talking about the emotional side. And really, a lot of who she was catering to not was not only the patient who was you know, going through the, the dying process, but, but also the family, maybe the, the wife who was trying, she was talking about a specific instance where there was a wife, but she was just really upset. You know, food is such a part of, you know, the family, you know, eating and you know, cooking for, for the family, and, and she was still trying to feed her husband and upset that he wouldn't eat. He didn't want to eat. And, and she, she you know, had to counsel the family and the, and the wife that sometimes in that process, the body stops being hungry right. you don't need the food because that's a lot of our focus um, is the family because the hospice is, is special in that um, the patient and the family are our unit of care so the focus is on each of those individuals as much as that patient oftentimes we'll go in and the patients are they're really doing fine they know what's coming they've accepted it you know they've struggled maybe they've had a lot of treatments maybe they've suffered a lot and they're really fine but that those family members, it's hard to let somebody go. Um, you know, we've had children, we've had young people. Well, we, we had a, a patient who was 102 years old and his wife is still still living. And she, it was not time for him to go. She did not want to let him go, even though he was 102. Mm -hmm. So our, our counselors and our chaplain and social workers really um, help those families come to terms with those things. Okay. So a lot of our focus is on the family members. And sometimes when we come in, um, patients are often relieved that they can finally say, you know, I don't want to go to dialysis anymore. I don't want to have another treatment. And I don't want to go back to the hospital. And and they can say that because they, they have that support and they know that those um, team members are going to be there to help their family. Um, I think this is an amazing topic, by the way. There are just so many things that you're talking about right now, the things that are going through my head about ethical discussions and situations that we've been having as a society over the last really 30 years. I remember even in the 80s growing up, this was a big topic. Um, and, and we were looking at the history of hospice. Now hospice, the word, comes from where, Patty? It comes from the Middle Ages. Um, and what, what a hospice was, um, it was a resting place for weary travelers. Yeah, okay, you know. Right. Yeah. Okay. So the 11, it dates back to the 11th century, really, the idea mm -hmm. of hospice. Right. It was almost or, or, like, a, like we don't, they didn't have hotels. Yeah. So if people would um, allow weary travelers to rest in their home, mm -hmm. then they would put a lighted candle in their window, and that kind of signaled that, that weary travelers could stop. Safe place to stay. Safe place to stay. From this, journey, from this place to the next place. Now, when we um, built our hospice house and our mm -hmm. office where we are now, um, they were going to let us change the name of the road. And um, we thought really hard about what we wanted to name that road. So the name is Windover, Windover Heights, mm -hmm. Drive. And wind means to go from this place to the next. And so that's what hospice, hospice does. Um, it helps travelers from this life go to the next life with, with quality. That's that's a really cool explanation. It is better than the, the Wikipedia a, explanation that I got. Right. Education. I got. It is. Yeah. But but it doesn't contradict what. No, what it doesn't. Said. It, it, it just, goes along with, with what it said. Mm -hmm. And hospice, the word specifically coming from hospitality. Hospitality. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very similar to hospitality. Um, one of uh, one of the things that I think a lot of people I have oh, with elderly parents. Okay. Mom and dad, you're doing fine. Everything's good. Uh, but they're not in one and ninety two, but they've had their health problems. But I can't bring myself to talk to them about the things that they want and the things that, that they need to do. And so do you have that counseling available to people? We know, do in the community. You don't have to um you don't have to be a hospice patient, okay, to come and or you know, involved in hospice to come to any of our grief support programs. Um, to have any of our counseling or any of our like social work um 
help with doing living wills and, and help get power of attorneys and those kinds of things. But um, Medicare requires us to talk to all of our patients and families about living wills and health care power of attorney. And um, I will tell you that it, things go a lot smoother when those things have been done early. Um, rather than when somebody's in a crisis and they're sick and this is coming and then you have to make quick decisions. So what we try to do is we try to talk to the public all the time about doing health care power of attorney and living wills. And really, the health care power of attorney, that's the most important uh, document that we feel like. Uh, it doesn't go into effect. You know, so somebody will say, well, what if I want such and such? And my daughter says, no, she wants this. Health care power of attorney doesn't go into effect until a patient can't make their own decisions. Yeah. Yeah, you can still make your own decisions with a healthcare power of attorney. That's you'd right. You'd only need somebody to step in for you if you were no, you incompetent, incapacitated, and right. in one of those situations. That's right. It's need to be somebody that you really trust and somebody that knows what you would want. I mean, my family knows that I, I don't want to be on the machine. I don't want to feed to. I don't want to be put on a van. I mean, not even for a little while. Right. Um, I don't think my husband could, could say, okay, I don't think he could, but my daughter could. And so she's my health care power of attorney because she, well, she's a nurse and she knows what the outcome is going to be. And um, she will make that, that um, decision like I would make that decision. So those documents are, we leave them in the home on our first visit and um, explain that, you know, our social workers are notaries and they can come out and help. And oftentimes it's easy to get a patient to do a health care power of attorney with you will when the whole family does them. So we'll just have the whole family do, complete their documents at that time. One of the things that we provide at our office is a planning book. Mm -hmm. It's an estate planning book. That it has a place to put everything, all the information that your heirs need to know. And it follows along the lines of what you're doing. And we provide those so that it makes it easier for the family to right. know where the insurance comes from, how much insurance there is, how much is in mm -hmm. their investment, who your investment banker is, or where your bank accounts are. So we have those uh, to whom you'll need them. Right. I think that is so important. And I think that, that um, the general population does not know how important that is. Mm -hmm. But working at hospice, I mean, we know that those things are important because we see um, you know, we see bank accounts being closed because until, until a will is probated and those kinds of things, um, you have to have all those things in place. And where's the, where's the life insurance policy? Where's the burial policy? I mean, people don't start looking for those until they need them. The journey notebook is another thing. That's an That's excellent good. I mean, that is so top notch. Mm -hmm. For $20, mm -hmm. you get, so, uh, you know, this notebook has just everything you need for yourself and your family, for all the resource contacts, to a place to store all your important documents right there. Yeah, and this is somebody, and we've met her before, she really is a proponent of this book, it carries her central strong with everything, even her divorce paper she brags about. But uh, even the photograph that you want put in the paper, That's right. Right. the list of people you want notified. So there are things like that that can be dealt with, I think. Right. With you, at, at you in talking with all the hospice people, um, well, we helped put that journey notebook together years ago. Yeah. Yeah, we all got together and helped put it together um, to help people think about things on the front side, you know, before you're in, like a, I say, you know, a crisis and, and you're having to come up with these things. Um, I don't think people realize things that happen after the death. You know, you have, you have to change up the, where the money's going to, everything on the, the bank accounts and um, who the beneficiaries are. I mean, there's a lot of work to be done. And if you do that on the front side, Unless you it's do not that scary. That's right. When I sit and down with a senior or a couple or family, you know, I like to have all the decision makers there. Um, you know, if, if, you, if you want your kids there, I, tell, I say bring them in. Mm -hmm. Okay, or I'll come to you. And we sit down and talk about the importance of, and you sound like me, talking about health care powers of attorney and living will. Right. For instance, ours dovetail together. Our, our living will states your intent or desire for a natural death. Mm -hmm. I almost hate the, I just don't like the term living will, by the way. I said that last week. Mm -hmm. Because it's somewhat, well, it's, not, a, it's, it's a really it's soft term for what it is. It's a declaration of a good death. Yeah. Yeah. Declaration yeah. of a desire for a natural death. Declaration of a desire. Or of a desire, desire for, a, for, a, for a natural death. Yes. Which, not to be confused with a will. Because mm -hmm. 
No, I've got it. We've got my living will in place. Well, that's <coughs> much different than your will. That's right. And and ours would do a statement of intent um, that you know you don't wish to be maintained by artificial machinery. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're terminal and curable, for instance, brain death has occurred, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, uh, and the, a release of liability for your attorney, in fact, your healthcare mm -hmm. attorney, in fact, your healthcare agent, and a, and the uh, the medical staff and facility for mm -hmm. honoring your wishes. Right. Um, but the healthcare power of attorney, if we're playing cards, Patty, and I have the healthcare power of attorney, and you have the living will, my healthcare power of attorney is going to trump your living will because I'm going to leave a human element in the healthcare power of attorney That's that right. says that you know, because you know I may know my family member a lot better than people who just met her recently, like the, the okay. staff, and, and I might say you know we we need to wait a few days on this, mm -hmm. you know, and it gives me the power in there to do that, mm -hmm. but also takes that guilt with decision off of somebody who might have a hard time making That's it, right. like your husband. That's right. Or or um, um, you know, and you know, just takes that off their shoulders. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I, that can be very important as well. Right. So so I'm, I want someone to be able to make that decision that contradicts my living will if they see things. If if they see something, right? I can't yeah. make that decision. I think that's important. That's how we're ours differ a little bit than the norm. Okay, and and I think that's extremely important is leaving the human element in the healthcare power attorney. That's something that I'm well, that's about. that's one thing that modern yeah. medicine has taken away right. is the human element. I mean, right. it really has. Um, because the, the medical model is about the medications and, and treatments and that kind of thing. When I first started at hospice in 1990, 1991 was when the living will and healthcare power of attorney conversation started. Right. And that was because of um, cruising in and, and th those different cases where you could keep somebody alive for years, for yeah. decades actually. Yeah. Right. And, and then the conversations you know, came up, do you, do you want to leave that in the medical community's hands? as to um, preserving life at any cost, or do people need to have that, that like you said, human element into, yeah. um, into their, their end of life situation? Where were your libertarian leanings? What would they say? I do think so. <laughs> hey, how would let you me say? make the decision. Let, me, let you and your family make that personal decision. Right, we, we got off into some very morbid subjects. This morning, uh, yes. we were doing a radio clip. Don't bring it up. Don't talk about the We radio. haven't. We haven't. Um, it's totally off the topic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it, it's just let me make the decision and then allow me also to give that decision to someone else should they have a better perspective than I mm -hmm. because if I'm medicated and I can't really make this decision. Right, right, I can't right. see it all. With a clear head. With a clear head. But you mentioned something a long ago about um, having uh, assets tied up in a will. Mm -hmm. That's what impressed me so much about one of the things that you do is casting things outside of the will. Oh yeah. So well, that yeah. they aren't tied up in sure. probate and you know, not subject to a lien. I mean, I've, I've got an article on my website, mclrl.com, that's our will is obsolete. That's the question I ask. And, uh, you know, I think it's important. There's still foundational documents to pass things where they need to go. But there's so many other options now. I mean, make sure your beneficiary, your primary and secondary beneficiaries are set up. So, so and you're still alive. IRA, 401ks, yeah. Oh, and, 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 and the people are, yeah, and the people that are the beneficiaries are still alive. That would be we, important. We do annual checkups. We do, we do us annual checkups. Things like that pass out, and people don't think about it. It's important it. to, to, to address those things pre planning. So many uh, banks now. Banks are starting to catch up to this, and credit unions mm -hmm. especially. They'll allow what's called a POD, payable on death, okay, um, account or beneficiary really, on a checking or savings account even, okay, um, as opposed to what you used to have to do and what you still do at some banks or you have to make that person a joint account holder with rights of survivorship. Mm -hmm. So they can, but they have some control in that account. You may want that person to have control, but you may not. You want to keep. You may want to keep that person out of meddling in the account, but but get that money ultimately if you pass away. Mm -hmm. So it gives you ultimate leverage and flexibility there, and it doesn't go through the probate estate or the will. Um, you can make your property, your house, that way um, very simply with deeds. Um, you know, there's just simple planning that you can do that uh, that doesn't take a lawyer. 
but but it takes sometimes me sitting down with that family and going through and making them aware and, and, and that's what hospice does they make you aware of where you can be cared for how you can be cared for what type of care you want and uh, where you can get your meds and things like that and that's what hospice does they make you aware of where you can be cared for how you can be cared for what type of care you want and where you can get your meds Oh, incredible. I, I said, do you rent your rooms on the weekend? Yeah, that's what people say. I'm serious. It's it looks like a ski chalet or something, mm -hmm. like a mountain, right. mm -hmm. mountain place. Yeah. Yeah. A spa. We do have spa. a spa in there. And we have a massage therapist mm -hmm. for our patients and the family members. And a beautiful garden. Mm -hmm. yeah, and and everybody's door opens to the outside. Mm -hmm. It's gorgeous. And I all the furniture is, it looks like a hotel, except for right. that they're not filled in. Um, I feel we're really very fortunate in Glenwood County because. Um, we get a lot of donations and a lot of support. And that's one reason why we want to provide like exceptional care. Because people trust us to take care of their loved ones and, and trust us to be good stewards of their money. So our buildings are paid for very quickly. Um, the rooms are named, um, you know, memorialized in people's names um, very quickly. And, and I feel like that's a, a compliment to our staff for the care that they give to, to patients and families. You know, how is it funded? If I wanted to go to the hospice, how would I pay for it? How do we pay for hospice care? How do we pay for hospice care? Okay, so I'm, I was going to so ask that. Um, okay. This is something I think that the public does not realize is that hospice, um, that Medicare is giving out to uh, most of our patients, you know, are older or the majority are older. Um, 65 and older, they have Medicare. When you are a hospice patient, Medicare has a benefit called a hospice benefit. That, that benefit pays for everything that hospice does. It pays mm -hmm. for all the staff, it pays for any equipment that has to be rented, it pays for oxygen, it pays for um, is that for in-home care or the hospice house stuff? Uh, I mean, okay, we're talking about in-home right now. And is that the supplement or before the supplement? Before. 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 So just regular before. Medicaid that every senior has. Medicare. 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 Right. Every Medic Medicare right. that every senior has right. has a hospice care. Has a hospice benefit. Hospice right. benefit. Excellent. And that benefit also covers 100% of all the medications that that patient's taking. So sometimes we can get in there and save the patients and families thousands yes. and thousands of dollars a month. Right. Because um, anything pertaining to that illness, you know, if you have heart disease, and that, that's what our primary diagnosis is, anything that you're taking for that heart disease, even if it's over the counter, it's paid for 100% with that Medicare benefit. A lot of people don't know that. Uh, the only criteria to be a hospice patient is uh, the, the doctor feels like if the illness follows its normal course, that you have uh, the patient will live six months or less. Now we have patients for a lot longer than that, but our median length of stay is 11 days. That means that 50% of our patients die within 11 days after we admit them. So they're not being able to access that Medicare benefit. And, and get all those things paid for. And I mean, that, that is the one thing about hospice care that keeps me awake at night, is knowing that there's so many people who could benefit you know, from having that support of the staff that they can call, but also financially, because being sick is very expensive. What about it, the uh, hospice care there at the facility? Okay, at the facility. And Medicaid. Um, if you you don't have much time. <laughs> okay, okay, so um, some of our beds are like residential, which is like in-home. That has a daily room and board fee. It's about $140 a day. But everything else is paid for. But if you're in a GIP, which is like an, an inpatient or crisis, similar to a hospital, it's paid 100%. So um, that Medicare benefit is, is so incredibly important. Um, we work with a uh, hospice pharmacy, so all the medications are ordered by the nurse and they're delivered right to the patient's door. And we've got a lot of elderly people in Cleveland County who are our patients. They can't get in the car and go get a prescription and go to the to the drugstore and wait on that. And so we, we just try to make um, everything as comfortable and, and the highest quality possible. So the nurse orders the medicine, the hospice Medicare pays for it, it's delivered right to the door um, so that people can spend their time you know, on the things that they enjoy. Well, Patty, this is, we've been with Patty McMurray today. Uh, amazing, knowledgeable person about hospice and hospice Cleveland County and end of life care. Thank you so much for the very beneficial information for the community. Yeah. And uh, it's nice to know that we do recognize on a state level um, and probably somewhat on a federal level um, just 
uh, how important uh, hospice is, say, including that in Medicare, that's correct, to, to, uh, to take care of and to, and to fund that, that issue, right? And anybody can make a referral to hospice also, so let me throw that in. Okay. If you know anybody who, uh, you just feel like, you know, somebody that's suffering seems to not be getting better, um, they can, anybody can call our office anonymously, give us a name, and, and we'll um, talk to the doctor and see if they're eligible. And if they're not, you know, we just file that away. And if they are, it can be the greatest gift that you can give What's, them what's the phone number? What, what number would they call? 704 That was Tyler. <laughs> that was All right, so we're out of time, folks. We're getting a we're getting a hook. We have some more questions. We will call you. The okay. audience can call you. Okay. Uh, uh, ask right. if they can tell you, you can talk to them about Medicaid and the fears that some people have that they're going to go there because you're wanting them to die. Mm -hmm. Give them the shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah that is that. Call Patty or call someone. Else. Please, please. Thank you. And uh, thank you for tuning in. We'll be here next week. Um, Greg McIntyre, Hayden Solway, the Elder Law Guy, with the Elder Law Report uh, after Swapping Shop next Friday at 10 a.m. And uh, if you need to call me, 704-259-7040, mention code word radio. I'd be glad to sit down with you with a free consultation with you and your family and discuss planning for protecting your hard-earned money and property. And we didn't give away the golden We didn't give them away. We'll keep them for next time. Next week, tune in. Keep them for next time. Yep. We might be a winner. All right. Bye now. Yeah, it goes flies by like crazy. Gosh, I'm not really. That's why they tell us all. We so wanted to address the fears of African Americans. And and because they're free, as Greg pointed out, that I didn't know there are other shows because it's a year. Get me back in here. I can tell you, we are. Hospice Cleveland County is nationally known for raising our African American. Um, access to hospice from 17% to 55%. That's so we've gone to Nashville and spoken at the conference. Well, because um, we have somebody that plugs into that community, right? That's right. That Sharon Martin. Sharon Martin. Right. Yes. So, so, I mean, That's who we ought to have on. She's my claim to Sharon fame, Martin. I'm telling you. We wanted to do that specific show. Where is Sharon? That's hospice yeah, Cleveland County. She, she works for me. And, she's who and spoke up and was talking about that. Listen, yeah. I almost had her come today. Yeah. And oh, that would be fun. Um, and, and with you, or you know, well, I tell you, you need to get her seriously because because there people are clamoring for her. We uh, we are like the top of uh, top of the nation. Cleveland County is. Yes. Cleveland County is the top of the nation in a lot of things. Oh, yeah, here, which yeah. is really amazing. Yeah, it is. It really. Is. I think because they like working back right. to yeah. the the cooperation between. Uh, Susan Kennedy, Lynn Byers, right, Nancy right. Acon, mm -hmm. Hospice. Even the attorneys. Yes. Even the attorneys. Listen, um, I, when I got Sharon 